Okay, this is section 1.3, and it's on quadratic models. And the general form of quadratic equations are is in this form right here, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where the x is squared. Okay, the independent variable squared. The standard form is in this format here. Again, when you FOIL this together, the x would be squared. But we can deal with equations in this general form or in standard form on the quadratic sheet, because here we can deal with them in general form, putting in your coefficients for a, b, and c right here. And if they come in... Uh, uh, standard form, or as I refer to it sometimes as the completed the square form right here, we can put in the A, H, and K right here and get the graph and max, min, and so on, everything you'd want to know, just like we can over here. Okay, now on this first problem, it's telling you the height of an object that is thrown vertically, straight up and down, into the air can be determined by this equation. So uh, uh, H equals negative GT squared over 2 plus V not T plus a H sub naught. No pressure, although the fate of the entire universe does depend on it. So don't blow it like you always do. Yeah, this would be easy to blow this problem and get, get kind of out of whack here with this because it looks so confusing. Uh, but really, we're just going to come down to a, a quadratic equation in a second. The G here stands for gravity, so we just substitute in a number in for that, depending if we're dealing with feet or dealing with meters. So that just gets a number substituted in. Your V sub naught or V sub zero is your initial velocity. And so this is how, how fast you're throwing the object up or down. And your H sub naught is the initial height that the object was thrown. Okay. Now, on this problem down here, it says, complete the table below for an object that was thrown upward at 50 feet per second and an initial height of 6 feet. Well, it's in units of feet, so I know right off the bat that the value that's going in for G is 32 because it's in units of feet. So the 32 goes in for the G, and if you take negative of 32, you get negative 32 over 2 gives me negative 16. So that's where that came from. Again, 32 because we're dealing with feet. And that's the number that you use for gravity. So 32 goes in there. Negative 32 divided by 2 is negative 16. Now, your V sub naught is your initial velocity. It was thrown upward at 50 feet per second, so it's 50. goes in there for the V. So it would be 50T. And then it was thrown from initial height of 6 feet high. It's like a person released the ball or rock or whatever he's throwing at, uh, at 6 feet high. And so that's your initial height, 6. Now, this is a quadratic equation, and to answer anything with this quadratic equation that describes how high the object is at any given time, we could just go to the quadratic sheet and put in our coefficients and complete tables and answer values for y if given an x or x if given a y. So let's go ahead and go to the quadratic sheet and put our, in our coefficients, which are negative 16, 50, and 6. So here's a quadratic sheet. And it's in this format right here. And my A, the number in front of the variable squared, was negative 16. My B, the number in front of the linear term in X, was 50. And the constant at the end was 6. So I put those in. Now, if I wanted to complete that table, I could go down here, scroll down, and maybe start the table at 0 and increment it by units of 1. And here I have a table made up. So I can see that at zero seconds, the ball was six feet high. In one second, it was 40 feet high. In two seconds, it was 42 feet high. In three seconds, 12. In four seconds, it doesn't make sense unless it was made out of kryptonite or something and went through the planet. But uh, it hit the ground somewhere between three and four seconds. Now, if I want to get a more exact value of where this object hit the ground, I could say, well, let's start. I know it's between three and four seconds. I could start at the table at three and increment it by 0.1. And now I can see it hit the ground somewhere between 3.2 seconds because at 3.2 seconds it was 2.16 feet above the ground and 3.3 it was underground. So when it hit the uh, ground somewhere between 3.2 and 3.3 seconds. Well, I could do this more, but this gets old after a while and there's a faster way. And here when I go to one hundredths, here starting at 3.2, I can see that it hit the ground about 3.24 seconds. Well, the easier thing to do here is when it hits the ground, then the height which is playing the role of y here on this equation, would be 0. So I'm just going to put 0 in for y, and I get these two answers. This is the answer that makes sense. It hits ground in 3.24 seconds. This answer is an extraneous solution. It doesn't make sense that it hit the ground before you threw it. So the only answer that makes sense is 3.24 seconds. Now, if we want to see the graph of this rock here, then we might want to graph it from, let's say, 0 seconds from when you threw it until it hit the ground 4 seconds or you know 3.24 seconds, however many seconds you want to go out here. So I get a graph 
that looks something like this. Now this part of the graph doesn't make sense. Really I should probably stop it at about 3.24 seconds. So I'll do something like that. And now you can see how high that ball was. That's what the y-axis is at any given time. Again, this is not the path of the rock. The path was thrown straight up and, and it fell straight down. This just tells you how high the object was, the rock, at any given time. And it was at ground level in 3.24 seconds. Not in 3.24 feet, but in 3.24 seconds. We can also see that it, it uh, never gets above a height of what? About 45 feet. So if I put down here something like, let's say, 46 feet, you're going to get no real solution. What does that mean? That means that the ball will never reach a height of, of 46 feet high. So if you get a question on the test, when will the ball reach 46 feet high, and you get no real solution, don't type in no real solution. Type in never, because that's when it's going to reach 46 feet high on this particular problem. And the same is true with anything we type higher than about 45. Now, what is this maximum height right here? Well, this maximum height, you can calculate it by hand, but it's also calculated for you automatically right here. Here's the maximum height. It tells you that it's a maximum. And uh, uh, it's at 45.0625 feet high. And when did that occur? In 1.5625 seconds after you threw it. When will the ball hit the ground? We already answered that. That's putting in zero for x. That's your x-intercepts. And your x-intercepts are also automatically calculated right here, along with your, your y-intercept is also automatically calculated. Now, when will the ball be, let's say, 10 feet high? Well, the ball is going to be 10 feet high at two different times here. And we can get both of those times here by just typing in 10 right here for your y, and you get both of those times. It'll be 10 feet high in 0.08 seconds and also in 3.04 seconds. So that's pretty much how you do everything. Tables of values, you can put in an x value, like how high will the rock be in two seconds. Boom, 42 feet high. Here's its maximum height, and it's a maximum because the leading coefficient is negative. If that leading coefficient is negative, it's going to be a maximum here because the parabola, that's what this graph is called, a parabola, it opens downward when the leading coefficient is negative. If the leading coefficient is positive, then the parabola opens upward like this, and we can't see the whole graph. Maybe if I back it up some, you'll be able to see it better. So the parabola opens up like this, and your point here, this vertex point, would be a minimum point. So that's how you uh, deal with these uh, quadratic equations. So we'll stop there and do another example.